Howdy YouTube. Hey everybody. I got a video request about Walmart. Basically just someone who I guess wants to get into this lifestyle and is really curious about how do you like where are some guidelines for camping at Walmart. They actually said how do I stealth camp at Walmart which technically is a misnomer because you have permission to park there. It's private property and with permission to park there you're not really while it's good to practice stealth techniques to be able to just stay under the radar and be respectful it's not like you're just staying somewhere without permission because you should always ask that's my number one tip that I'll start with is if you don't see campers and RVs truck campers camper vans as you get into this it's gonna be easy to spot them and if you don't see them there the easiest thing I do is just ask the security guard there's usually a security guard driving around Ask them, is it okay if I camp here overnight? And I've even had them say, technically we don't let people do that, but if you park at the edge, you'll be okay. So as you noticed, I have a guest star with me today, Minivan Vince. And I was trying to think, who has the most experience sleeping at Walmarts of anyone I know? That's me. I've done it for months. So let's Without let, ever asking permission. Yeah, let's <laughs> let Vince uh, start with some of his favorite tips for camping at Walmart. Yeah, the first one is uh, stay away, well, stay away from Walmarts that are connected to another business. So they're in a strip mall. So like here's the Walmart and there's a Kohl's right next to it. If that's the case, then Walmart does not own that parking lot. Kohl or the, the uh, property owner, the property company does own it. And usually there's big signs, overnight parking, no this and that. And it's not up to Walmart at that point. It's up to who owns it. And in Arizona and other places, they're like they put them in huge strip malls. And actually, I did stay the night in those places because in Arizona and certain places, it's just wide open. And you, if you see other campers, other vans, it's okay to do. So don't worry about it. Uh, but... In this particular place in Orlando, or outside of Orlando, that I we stayed for three nights, pulled up then there. It was the closest Walmart, and it was like really downtown, and there was a Kohl's right beside it. Tons of parking, but I mean the signage was crazy. It wasn't like the Walmart, no overnight parking with a little toe sticker. It was like from a property company, and so I knew it wouldn't work, or I didn't want to deal with that. So went for. Uh, went for a walk around Walmart and found out that so there's the Walmart property with all the signage and then on the edge of Walmart right on the outer edge there was parking for employees with no signage it was on a main road and it, that probably was owned by Walmart because there was no signage it was outside of the normal parking and the big old sprinter pulled right in with all the employees three nights no one said a word That's we cool. left in the morning we got there after dark we left first thing in the morning, but we were there all night, never an issue. Now, Vince touched on a good thing here because while I talk about best practices and what would be the most honest and responsible thing to do, which would be asking permission, if you don't see those campers there, there is always the employee parking, like Vince mentioned. And you'll find that not just at Walmart, but at other places that have people work at night, overnight, maybe oh, stocking. 24 hour. Places. Yeah, so even if a business isn't open 24 hours, there may be staff members there at night, and you would see, you know, several, maybe four or six cars or whatever in the parking lot. But with a vehicle like Vince's minivan, then you can do that. If you're mm -hmm. in the right kind of vehicle, a cargo van like mine would quite possibly stick out in a scenario like that. But if you have the right kind of vehicle for it, a sedan, maybe a minivan, something like that, maybe even a conversion van but that's probably pushing it a bit then you could just park with them and you just look like one of the staff members right and well, there was one time i asked because he uh will talks about security guards and in florida here they have security they have security guards at the exit when you leave to show they can check your receipt which i've never seen anywhere else in the country except new york city and and they actually a lot of places do have security a security force that drives around and checks and so there was one place right outside of Disney World area and so it was really iffy and uh, I just went up the guy was driving I just said hey um, and it said specifically no RVs over 20 feet 
no trailers, no, I mean, it didn't say, it didn't say overnight parking, it said no trailers, and no RVs, and so I asked, hey, we're in that van over there, can, can we just park over on the side, and he said, oh yeah, we just don't let RVs, um, because they take up too much space, so park there all you want, and I'm like, okay, cool, we're just going to be here for the night, we'll leave in the morning, and he said, yeah, I'll let, I, I'm leaving soon, I'll let them know that you're going to be there, and they won't, they won't give you any trouble. So let's try to name five things you should never do at the Walmart. Okay. You want to start, Vince? Never use the pull out the pot the the pop outs. Yeah, don't don't put the slide out on your RV. Guys, no. At the Walmart. That is so tacky. That's not cool. Even people will. I've seen people just look like they're tailgating out there. They pull out their chairs. Even if you don't have the slide out out, people pulling out their chairs. That's two. And their ice chest. And all that stuff. Yeah, I would say number two, just don't treat it like your lawn or like your tailgating party because it is a business. They're doing you a service by they, allowing you to sleep there. And they don't have to because I've been in different places in the country where you could not overnight at Walmart. It was explicit. And so you can lose the right. In Colorado where they're totally free, in Longmont, both the lawn, there was two super Walmarts in Longmont and... They they were too many crystal meth making crystal meth in their in their RVs and no overnight parking was allowed at all and uh, I still parked there for two months every single night because and there were lots of people who got kicked out but I got there after nine and left before seven every morning and we went around to the very edge like in the flower section or you know where the gardening and uh, never had an issue but we were out in and out super fast. So what would you say is another thing? Let's look at the number three thing never to do. Number three, don't dump your gray water. I've seen that. That is crazy. People, what are you doing? <laughs> and I would just type in with that, you know, showering at the Walmart. If you don't have a gray water tank, everybody knows about the shower incident. And doing something like that, not really cool, guys. It can totally ruin it for that location forever. Yeah. I would say number four would be something to never do there would be leaving trash or any signs that you were there. When people go to national parks, there's a leave no trace rule. And if a company is kind enough to extend you the service to let you camp overnight in their parking lot, I would observe that same rule there. Leave no trace. Don't right. leave any trash. Like Vince said, the gray water, obviously any other nasty materials you may think of leaving there, keep it to yourself, people. Take it to a different place. Yep, absolutely. Number five, Vince. Never do. Number five. Okay, let's see. I mean, maybe loud music. Yeah. Make don't, yourself obvious. Right, don't just be out there like having a party this kind of ties in with the tailgating thing it's like be respectful of their parking lot and not just their parking lot but the other patrons because it is a business yeah and if you turn other people off to the point where they complain about you if you're doing things that make them uneasy it could be playing loud music it could be doing other things inside your van you might not you don't in other words you don't have to be sitting out there in your camping chairs to create a nuisance you can create a nuisance from inside your van as well so yeah I would definitely say yeah great number five is just don't be a nuisance and then what are five things you should always do I would say in general having done this for so long from October till now and I'm continuing to do it so in all this from October 2015 to now stick to the edges you don't want to park right in the middle you don't want to park you want to kind of go to the edges and on, to, on that note, go near the other RV people. Exactly. You don't want to be the one lone RV parking in the very middle of the parking lot when you see others out at the edge. Kind of stick with them. I would say number two, just if you don't see them there, I know Vince said he doesn't always ask, but for me, I think it's a good courtesy to them. If we're dispensing this message to everybody and saying these are the things you should do, right. I would say just ask. If you don't yeah. see other rigs there where people aren't obviously camping there overnight, just ask somebody. 
And yep. the worst case, they'll tell you no, and you just got to go somewhere else. Best case is they'll just say, it's cool, which has always been our experience. I've never had them tell me no. I haven't either, Even but there have, been, there have been places where I knew I couldn't, we couldn't stay. Right, if you see signs and Inner stuff, city and, and stuff. it's really obvious. Then... San Diego, you can't, pretty much all of San Diego, you cannot sleep at a Walmart. It's too much crime. They, they won't let you. Number three, things to do. Man, I put my blackout curtains up right away. Yeah. I put my make it le, as as little as low obvious that I'm there. Open the door, shut the door, get in and out. Exactly. I would say definitely, you know, exercise those stealth methods. Even though it's not technically stealth camping, you know, just stay under the radar. Again, don't really create a nuisance and bother people. I would say number four would be, you know. I don't want to just say ones that are the opposite of what we said not to do. You know, cleaning up after yourself is kind of obvious. But I would say just being respectful, maybe even trying to leave the place better than you left it. I've pushed carts back up to the front of the store. If I'm there camping overnight and I have to go use the restroom, I'll push carts back up. I'll uh, even pick up litter that I might see in the parking lot. Things like that go a long way if the manager or other people have seen your vehicle there and kind of might have a clue what you're up to it may be obvious more or less obvious depending on what kind of rig you're in and they see you actually being responsible and helpful to them you know that's going to go a long way and not just whether they see you or not but it's just the right thing to do yeah and the last thing i would say is in late out early just like any other stealth camping you do anywhere else get in there after dark if you can Get out of there earlier than later. Speaking of dark, it's starting to get there, guys. I see that. I can barely see myself. So if you haven't <laughs> checked out Vince's channel, I'll put a link here, Minivan Vince. He's got a custom minivan build that is just really cool. That How much do you have in that thing now? It's like 1100 bucks total Yeah. with the vehicle. And we pretty much built it out in one day. I helped him. So a lot of cool build videos. Go check out his channel. And we'll see you next time, YouTube.